Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter, artist. I love to draw, I love drawing very stylized, very abstract work and I love sharing my thoughts, my ideas, my processes with people, leading you through how to do things a step at a time and encouraging you to be creative. My opinions, my methods, sometimes I borrow from Zentangle but a lot of it's the thoughts that go on on my own and you're welcome to take what you need from those and if you it means that no that doesn't work for me then you're one step closer to understanding what does work for you so it's a win-win situation for us all which is fantastic so what i want to do today is i'm going to start off by a look a quick look in a sketchbook because some people have said they really like looking in my sketchbooks so this is one that i actually started march 2022 when I started a lettering course on Duolingo, but it's become a mixture of lettering and drawing and so on. I'm not gonna go all the way back, but this one I did, oh, a week ago. I drew it a week ago and I started adding color to it a couple of days ago because I want to work out how I can add color, what mediums work for me. Yeah, I swap back and forth. This one though has been done with colored pencils various brands i've used um faber castells just cheapish ones um i've used derwent color soft and i've used some brett funa pastel pencils here as well and i think i use some others like derwent drawing pencils as well um just to get a feel and and usually for me you might see i've added patterns texture patterns in color you'll see more in a moment of things this is done. Um, drawing in colour with coloured pens has always been a struggle for me. It never felt feels right. But here it seems to work quite nicely. Um, for these I've used um, Stadler Triplus pens, though I bought boxes of colours that I thought what they were and they're not the sort of mama colours I thought they were. But I'll, I'll learn to love them, I'm sure, or use them in different ways. Some of them are so similar and I'm thinking, hang on, that's not the colour. So hopefully I've got the right ones. Oh yeah, beautifully weird. I mean, gosh, that, that describes my artwork. Um, cozy days, this was done just uh, the 4th of April. And I did just need a cozy day at home. I just needed one. You can see that, I don't know if you can pick up on the camera, perhaps if I put the light on, it might help. No, not really, because it's sunny-ish out, cloudy sunshine. I've used a moss green fine liner to put some of the background texture in in places and it's odd how you do that and suddenly it helps to lift everything up. There's a lot more needed on this one though, shadow especially, but it's, you know, it's a work in progress. This one's a work in progress. I love lettering and so I'm looking at different styles of lettering, how to embed them. I'm not too happy with how I've done this one, but um, you know, it is what it is, my initials, AP, but I do like these elements here. And you might see there's some, um, let's try and get it, gold sparkle there. I used a glitter gel pen and a Uniball Signo gold glitter pen. And I put um, some Sakura glaze on the top to seal it in so it doesn't rub off. These were colour soft pencils that I blended out. It's not finished yet. I sort of lost my way a bit, but I'll come back to it. Or perhaps it is finished and I, you know, putting the lines in will make it feel finished. Now, this is where I started drawing with a brown pencil. I thought this one was a nice burnt sienna. Yeah, not. But I actually really like this. Um, there's something about the brown that just intrigues me. If I want to add colour to this one, it's going to be awkward because I used Stadler Triplus pen and they are water soluble. So I'm going to have to use non-water soluble media. I do want to scan it in. I wish I'd scanned some others in before I added colour, but it doesn't matter. I can still scan them in and redraw them digitally, so it's not a problem. Um, but I do like this. I do want to add background colour. <laughs> and shadows and perhaps some more texture in here with a different colour pen um, and I'll see how that works. But heart song, um, heart make, art makes my heart sing, it's my one of my heart songs, it's one of the, the melody lines or the harmony lines of that. 
these are in a very dark chocolatey brown very dark brown it's not black but it's a dark brown and um, silly you know, confidently predicting or is it predicting confidently either way makes sense but it's you know I use the Inspirator word generator app on my Android phone to come up with some of these but I like this I like that dark brown it's a softer color than black it's not so harsh flinches in secret so all of you who wear a mask you know what I mean when I say that is that you keep your flinches and your shock and you know sort of like awkwardness or awkward feeling being around something more or less to yourself a lot of the time put a brave face on if you're putting a brave face on so flinches in secret and no idea why I chose these patterns and things but we did <laughs> so these are some kind of bacteria they look a bit like E. coli yeah I know they're sort of like funny little flowers stars of course well I say of course but I've got shorter versions of those though without these long tendrils coming off but I quite like doing these decorated little um, plaques or there's a name for them isn't there cartouches okay this one's in a moss green and I really like that moss green on this creamy coloured paper metaphorical and again these these and the brown ones were triplus pens and again it's a sketchbook if I want to scan it in and do stuff with it I can and I will even if I start adding colour I can and I will this one or these two are interesting again triplus multi triplus liner stadal triplus um, I used the ready brown colour and uh, an ochre colour this one and I don't know if you know, does the camera pick it up I put the ochre at the tip of the petals and the darker brown one at the bottom which worked out and filled in little areas with that in the background here this I'd actually got in that colour in a, a Knightsbridge you know a checkerboard kind of pattern but it was just lost in the background so I came back and I filled these in with black and so the letter really stands out but everything else is sort of like in the background um, I was thinking William Morris when I did these you know arts and crafts and the other things that's quite Art Nouveau here it's very I suppose it could be a variation of Mooka and this Mooka over here in flux and um, anything else that you recognize as Zentangle oh look the Knight's Bridge down there I thought I'd fill that in to match my letter I'll put this some there as well so it's fine this one though is the one I wanted to show you more than anything because I really like I like this is such an unusual thing for me to do yet I really like it I like my letter I like the way I filled it in I like the fact I've done this in just black and the background color opportunity to add color to add shadow I like this texture I filled it with this edge here is interesting this pattern these strands here are a new one to me it's called I wrote it down you can see it it's called Bella and it's by Linda Farmer Bella is spelled B-E-L-L-A-H Linda Farmer C-Z-T I saw it on tanglepatterns.com as I was looking for a tangle pattern that began with B preferably one I hadn't done before and one I could use to split this space up and then to fill the space in between I've used betweed in every one all going in the same kind of direction and I am so in the spaces between these and this really fascinated me and I'm really really chuffed with that and um, there is something on the other side but it is personal so I won't be showing you that one okay that's as far as this one goes this is my big A4 book and I've shown you this one recently um, I finished this little one down here and you can see all of the hopefully you can see all the the golden sparkle in that background texture but I like the way that's worked out I really do it's um, different for me okay so 
this page here and I'll show you from the top and I'll move it up to the bottom. I actually used, I drew pencil squares on these six and I used stencils and distress inks to add subtle colour to the background. Very subtle, perhaps a bit too subtle. And so then I thought I'm going to draw in these. So I started off in my typical way and I'm not too happy with how I've added colour and this texture down here, but this, this is with coloured pencils and a blender pencil. A blender pencil helps to smooth out coloured pencils and to blend colours one into another. I bought some Caran d'Ache ones and my favourites are still the Derwent. They, they work for me the best of them all. They seem to work better. Not the burnisher, the blender. There's two. So I'm, I've only got a couple left so I've, I've got some more ordered and I couldn't believe how expensive they are on Amazon. So I've gone to my favourite cult pens and they're a third of the price there. And I had an offer as well for buy three get one free. So buy two and have a free one which is great. So they'll be here sometime in this week so I won't run out. But the others are just ways of filling, of dividing space. I suppose in Zentangle terms it's a kind of a string but in Angela terms it's the bones of what I want to do. These I will come back to and I'm going to add colour and pattern to these and I think I'm going to add colour first with ink tents which is permanent when you wet it and then use fine liners to add the patterns in on top. So I'll move this down so you can see the bottom of the page, all of these. Then on this side of the page, because I've done the um, Bella pattern, which is, this is some variations here. And I think I draw it a bit different to the step out because, you know, it happens. Um, just trying slightly different shapes for these. I'm going to use this one today in today's video. But this one is kind of, I suppose, a kind of variation in a way. Um, this, um, this one is um, Aruka's, but done in an odd way, you know, with things going over and under, there's some weaving going on. And I used a triangle at the middle instead of a circle. And I haven't completed it all the way through. I like that as it is. I have space to work. This one, I just did it because I happen to like this pattern. I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what it is. And then here, these are kind of seed pods that I draw, but instead of just having a seed pod, I connected them in lines. So I've got spaces between them as well. I can fill in. And there's those kind of shapes here. And again, I've got spaces that I can fill in. I haven't done any more, I haven't done any more but um, I've got these here. So I do like to work in a big sketchbook. I'm particularly fond of working in a small textbook. Oh, sketchbook, not textbook, sketchbook. Um, and today, what I've got here, and you will excuse me while I just get my camera down so I'm closer to my paper and move my paper to where it needs to be and just square this up a bit. Ah, that's better. Autofocus lock on. Brilliant. Excellent. Then what I've got here to draw with initially, I'm using some Sakura Pigma Microns. These are black. They're made in Europe. I think they're made in the Netherlands by Royal Talons. I think it's Royal Talons. And, um, and a license from Japan. So they're black with gold tops. They're rather lovely and they're a lot cheaper than the Sakura ones from Japan because of the cost of transport import and things like that. But they're exactly the same. So I've got an 01, an 05 and an 03. I'm, am I tempted to? I'm not going to do an initial because I don't know what I'd do today. I need to do a C really. But this is going to end up in my Entangled Samplers sketchbook. So I'm going to do this Bella pattern first and my way if, if you want to look the step out I'll put a link in the description below okay I will remember to do that so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw 
a line just like that it can be a straight line it can be a curvy line it can be one that circles back on itself a loop it doesn't matter you just need a line and I'm using an 05 for this then what I'm going to do on this one I'll keep it fairly simple is I'm going to draw a semicircle on one side then on the other side I'm also going to draw a semicircle but I'm not going to join it up I'm going to shift it along a little bit like this and because I've got a long line here I'm going to do the same elsewhere except with this one I'll put the underneath one back towards the start of the line so just staggering them doesn't matter which way you do them so now I want to this is where I think I differ I think in Linda's step out I think she she looks at where this is going to come over and puts a line here so that when it comes over you have a separation between this and this as it were but I'm going to put lines on both sides all the way along because it makes sense to me to do that and it reminds me a bit then of Aruka's I suppose Then, and this is, the, this is the tricksy bit, so I'll zoom in. So this bit is relatively easy. Then what I want to do is I want to come across here from this, this point up to this line here. I'll put a dot there. And then I'm going to draw, almost complete this circle, like so. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, like that. And it looks like I've got two kind of discs intersecting each other and being in, you know, intersected and bisected by this line here. So I'm going to do the same here. It's clever kind of weaving. And like so. Let's finish that off. So if I zoom out. So I now want to have a line sort of like I want to start overlapping or not overlapping but well yeah but not overlapping but going under so I'm going to draw another line I'm going to stop here at this one break it imagine I'm carrying on and I'm going to go this way and again I'm going to put semicircles underneath and you can play around on scrap paper and see how how far along or you know sort of like this one's a bit closer to the to this end but I could have drawn it further down this way and you get a different I get slightly different look so perhaps I'll do that here is that I'll draw one here but instead of going towards the middle let's move it a bit more this way quite a bit more as an experiment and I'm going to just put a tiny one here and I'm going to put the other end really close to this end so here it's more or less in the middle this one it's shifted towards shifted so that these two are further apart if you like and this one so they're further together but I am going to do the same thing where I'm going to aura the line try and keep it as even as I can and then I'm doing the playing around with these for you so you can decide if you want to do that or if you've decided already how best you like these shapes and I'm going to do some shape variations on some of the others so I'm just going to finish these ends off I do like to cap the ends of things okay so now I need to draw this in and it's going to go like this almost like it's a circle I've missed a bit but nobody's going to complain about that I don't think and there this one 
like so and then this one will go like so and this one's going to be interesting because we've only got a little bit and a little bit there they're the same but they do look subtly different this one looks much more compact and as if we've got almost like um, berries going on you know closely superimposed okay I know what I'm going to do next I do so I'm going to put another line in perhaps this time I'm going to put one that's fairly straight here and with this one I'm going to create a shape that is more triangular and you'll see why and I'm mirroring it on the bottom so it's almost like a leaf shape where it's half a leaf and I've, I've split it along and um, do the same but perhaps with the same shape like that so this one's mirrored here I've done the same kind of the shape going in the same direction if that makes sense so I've got the long side here and the short steep side here short steep side longer side longer side longer side and again I'm just going to do this so putting two lines in all the way along may not be the way in the step out but I quite like the look did it by accident because I got confused and when you get confused you know so on this side I want that half of the leaf so I want it pointing that end and this way I want it pointing there so it looks a little bit on the different side here it's going to go quite flat and here it's going to go quite steep it's a slight subtly different again and I'm sure that without you could do that without using rounded corners okay so I am going to carry on with this I'll speed up a little bit and uh, we'll see how this works out go so I do want to use these to, to split up the space into sections into areas so I guess I'm using a pattern as a string in Zentangle terms but, you know if it works that's actually something I did colour in somewhere or did use as a quote in that, that little black book I showed you my lettering one well if it works I think that's from Star Wars it is it's from this episode two, Clone Wars. There we go. Took me a while to work that one out. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do something that looks a little bit like a heart shape or the side of a letter B, like so. And perhaps then I'm going to do something where perhaps we'll make it a bit more peanut shaped. Perhaps a bee nut. And then perhaps something that is truly triangular. Like so. I've said this before that I like to do variations in these samplers because it gives me that opportunity to explore things in an interesting way and it means that I don't have to think about a complete and finished polished work of art because it is a they are samplers they are here for ideas and because it's a kind of sketchbook yes I know I've got um you know it's sort of a disc bound one but it's still a sketchbook that frees me up from a lot of things okay so on this side I want to use this kind of shape but I want them to join up again as it's almost drawing the other half of these shapes 
So that's a bit different there. So this one goes that way. And then this one goes there. You can see how they join together. It's almost imagined going through there. And then this one is going to be fun because we're going to go up, down. My up one there is about here and back. It's a bit skew with, but it'll be fine. So we've got lots of lots and lots of ideas going on. Okay, now this one, the next line, I'm find I'm gonna find it hard to get things kind of um overlapping here because I want to leave big enough spaces that I can put things in. So instead of having something to split this space up, I'm launching that central line as a branch off this one here. And um, let's do some, we've done, t these are sort of leaf shaped or teardrop shapes. Uh, we could do squarish shapes or half hexagons. Let's try half hexagons like so. Well, they look like the feathers on arrows almost, don't they? And um, perhaps squares or rectangles. And see how that works. So I'm going to have again, this side launching off from this earlier line over here to the end there. And then that line can launch off here. And I'm just putting a bit of ink, corner rounding, where these connect. I'll go back and do this elsewhere, perhaps later on. Let's have a look. Now, this is where the fun begins. Oh no, it's another Star Wars one. That's from Return of the Sith, with the battle right at the beginning. Yeah, worrying. I'm talking in Star Wars. That's interesting. This one, and I am going to have them going above each other because nothing says that they have to be slap bang in the middle through the shape. They are interesting, aren't they? Do you like those? I think I'd like one. But again, I don't want one that will go and split this space up anymore, but I would like to split this big space up. So I'm going to go here. Perhaps I can put a half a flower. On each side. So we'll do that on this side, like so, and this side, like so. And again, we're just going to put the two lines in. And then I'm just going to go to the other side and draw the other side of the petal in. It's awkward to try and mirror these, but I think as long as you do the best you can do with them, they'll be fine. Same kind of shape, it works. It actually does work. And I'm sure you could actually add more if you wanted to keep on adding I could put other perhaps we'll do that with this one put another line in on both sides so we're really getting something complex so I need another petal on that side and I need one on this side but I'm starting where these join together 
and this one I kind of missed but I'm going to make sure it connects back to these so let's have a look like so this one's going to be a bit awkward because it's going to go it will go this way so I'm going to pop it behind that'll do it's close enough I think I missed that one completely but you can keep on adding if you wish that's interesting that's really interesting I like that that works nicely you could keep on going building layers and layers up wow I'm not going to do that because I've got enough spaces here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a frame all around these I have drawn a pencil border in here using a ruler but because I'm drawing it freehand in case I make any slips I'm just putting little notches in my lines little wobbles here and there so I don't have to draw the perfect line because it looks like if I get any wobbles it looks like they're deliberate and it is becoming my kind of signature style for these, I have to say. I like this. I like the imperfection of it. And I'm also in control of that imperfection. It's a deliberateness. Which I like. Okie dokes, now then. What I'm going to do now is I want to aura these sections. I may not do them all today but we'll have a look and see because I do want to create a clearly defined space within these and I'm doing um, this aura because that's what it is really a bit wider than the lines I've drawn already so it differentiates it nicely and I am going around these shapes vaguely as they are I'm not going to sweat if they're not exactly the same so I've created something it's a bit like a window there if you want to you could almost cough is it coffering where you draw lines from the corners I'm not going to do that. I'll do another another space, perhaps this one. So like so. And I was going to create a border that went along the edge but obviously that one's decided it wants to disappear out of the underneath the frame which is fine and perhaps this one I can do in fact I might end up doing them all because once you start it looks odd if you don't complete them all and they don't take that long really now, do I want to finish this one here, as I did with the other one there? I think so. Do that with the edge ones. And then I can go down there, and we can just go down that way. Again, if my lines are wobbly, it's not going to be a big deal here. Because everything's a bit wobbly now. You can see I'm turning my paper as I'm drawing just so it makes it easier for me to complete the lines. So we've got that one in. It's this side now. It's a bit Like 
like so. This one, okay. It's quite an easy one. I'm not going to try and dent this shape where these triangles are. I think I'll just go over them as if it's one curve. This one though I might because there's a distinct little dip there and that'll be fine. Didn't quite make that there. So I've just got a couple left to do. So I find it helpful to start drawing these lines in a corner because it's easier then to join the lines together and try and I try to draw them in one go then. That one's gone a bit skew-whiff, but it's fine. Squiffy, a squiffy line. So I'm starting in the corner there and I can go down and then it's easy to start where I did and go in the other direction. It's just how I do things. You know, you may have your own way. But I find this a useful thing. It stops me having untidy stops and starts, as it were. But I know that not everybody's quite as confident in drawing lines in one go. Here, did you see I stopped there at a point? I stopped here where the line will bend and then I can pick that up easily. Do the same there, same there, and complete that line. And I've got the last section to do here. So I'll start in this corner. So it's best to break the line where you've got a change in direction if you can. And bear in mind, I'm drawing on much bigger paper than a Zentangle tile. There we go. So that's all of those done. Okay, so I'm going to pop that to one side for a moment. Here I've got a cloth. It's actually bamboo fibre. So I can wipe my brush on. And I have chosen some Inktense pencils. I don't know whether you'll see this, but I've got Hooker's Green, Navy Blue, Dark Aquamarine and Green Aquamarine. And I'm going to start with some navy blue and I'm going to choose smaller spaces because I'm going to do this with you and then I'm going to get some fine liners to put some colour in. So what I'm looking at here is where I'm going to put the darkest colour. I really should have erased the pencil lines before doing this but it's fine, they'll disappear. So I'm thinking about where I'm likely to have shadow on this as I add the colour because that's where I will want more. Now my colouring isn't exactly the best. I, To be honest with you, I don't have a lot of patience with colouring with pencils generally. I'm, I'm warming to it. But here I've got a, um, it's a, a Zig, Kuretake Zig water brush. I think this is the fine one. I find them a lot more convenient than brushes and um, a tub of water or jug jar of water, glass of water, whatever, pot of water, large tank of water, because they, I don't have to keep going back and forth to the, the water and the water inside the brush doesn't get mucky. So I'm trying to get a nice gradient here, I'm trying to ease smooth out some of my lines but I'm not worried if it's not perfect because this is just some background colour and instantly you can see how that is helping to separate these patterns here from the background and I'm actually quite tempted to do all the background spaces in the same colour to be honest so I'm looking at putting the darkest colour towards the top of these spaces now it's going to get challenging with the larger spaces but let's see how we go So I'll just do a couple. 
So I definitely want some colour around the outside edge, particularly underneath this as well and down here. Probably around here. I quite like it when the um, tips of these pencils kind of wear down. Okay, it's a quite a way into the video, but while I'm sorting this out, I've been missing in action again. I've had a wobbly week in terms of my energy and focus and ability to do anything much. Um, it's just one of those things. Um, it's going to take a while for things to settle down fully with me, but I'm, I'm getting there bit by bit. It might take me a while. Oh, darn it. That's dried already. It's quite warm in my house today. So um, I'm just going to say thank you for sticking with me, especially if we got this far along in the video. And, um, you know, I'll try and get more out as the weeks go by, you know, more in a week. Whether I'll go back to one nearly every day, I don't know. Right, OK, so I need some more of this colour. So I'm using my brush and the tip of the pencil as if it's a watercolour block, a block of watercolour paint, and it works. I have got ink tents um, blocks, as in they look like pastels. Chalk pastel, you know, blocks of chalk pastel, but um, this will this will just help me to even out where I need to even out. I'm overworking this paper a bit. It's getting a bit damp, so it's buckling, but I know that when it dries, it'll be fine. And I'm not, as I've said, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for something that is good enough as I'm going to draw some patterns on the top. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough. OK, I'll choose to do um, a small one. Let's do this one over here. Oh, look at that. I've just picked the colour up with this. I also need a bit more water flowing out of my brush, which will help. Because when the brush gets too dry, that doesn't help. So I'm going to add some more colour there. On that side. Now, obviously, I'm using these, but if you don't have them, don't rush out to buy them. Use what you've got in your stash, whatever you can add colour to the background with. And if you've got fine liners that are permanent, you know, like the, the Sakura Microns, you know, the brown ones or whatever, then use those and they'll be fine. And I'll just do this one up here. Oh, look at all of that lovely, yummy colour. I may go back to that one once it's dry to add some more. This is navy blue, so normally use deep indigo because I really like indigo but I thought this might be nice for a change. Okay we've got that's just a little bit more over on this side just to even this out. You can see as it's wet now I can uh, it will spread into the colours which is a better way of doing it. I always forget these little tips. I've managed to get some of this ink in this section here so I think it's going to have to remain as it is. But we've got all of these. That is now that's dryish. Okay. Now these sections that are in here I'm going to use because these although they look like flowers they could also look a bit like oops I'm going to put my hand in that one. Idiot. So so yeah, so my emotions are much better. My mood is a lot more steady, but I just have problems in motivation and I still seem to get fatigued quite easily, which is part and parcel of some of the medication I'm on. And that's beginning to settle down, but um, it's only been what, four or five weeks, six weeks perhaps. So I know it's going to take a wee while longer. This is Hooker's Green, which is a, a lovely green colour. Again, I'm likely to put patterns in these, or borders, edges, whichever, but for now I'm just going to fill them with colour. 
and I'm trying to keep the darkest colour right at the base and just move colour out. So I'm just going to say it again, I've already said it, but thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for your lovely comments and for understanding. And I'm a, having been somebody who has experienced depression, anxiety all of my life, not knowing that everybody, not everybody felt that way or experienced it. If I'd been educated in how it feels and that it's okay to get help and that you're not being histrionic or attention seeking or anything else that I was told um, growing up, then this may all have been sorted a lot sooner in life and perhaps I wouldn't have had so many recurrences. Having said that, I'm not going into it, but childhood was interesting for me, as in may you live in interesting times, which isn't a blessing, it's a curse. Chinese one. By interesting they mean dangerous. Um, so, um, yeah, so that had to, that had contributed to, to everything as well. So, you know, worked on a lot of that. Life moves on. I move on. And, um, it's all fine. It's all good. Well, as good as it'll be at the moment. So I will get myself more organised and sorted. It's a matter of getting myself to bed earlier and getting up earlier and taking my medication earlier, I think. Because um, I am getting, I'm not going to say lazy, but I do find it hard to get out of bed much before 10 o'clock unless I absolutely have to, and then I'm messed up for the rest of the day. Which happened, you know, it's happened a couple of times this week where I've had appointments and, um, well, my older sister and I met up for brunch. She was visiting my niece, actually my great niece, who's my older sister's granddaughter. So we had some adult time because the house is full of two autistic twins and a teenager, as well as my niece and her husband. So we went for brunch and it was lovely. We went to a favourite little cafe I, I was taken to ooh, last year sometime by a friend. And it's become a favourite place to go because it can be really lovely and quiet. It's a bit busy on Thursday, um, school holidays here, Easter holidays. So lots of people out and about and doing things. But we had a lovely brunch. We had um, French toast or eggy bread, if that's what you know it as, with berries and um, some yoghurt that had a texture like whipped cream. So I don't know if you, it's on my list of things to find out, can you whip yoghurt to be like a cream? It was Greek yoghurt, so it would have been thick and creamy, like double cream anyway. And I'm thinking, ooh, I thoroughly enjoyed the lightness of it. It was really lovely, fair play. And I don't often eat eggy bread, but when I do, I enjoy it, especially if somebody else cooks it, because um, it was very lightly eggy, which was brilliant, because I'm not a fan of eggs but it was about the only thing I really warmed to on the brunch menu. I mean, I don't eat salmon, so there's no way I was going to have anything to smoke salmon in. So, <laughs> you're welcome to my world, I'm weird. This is green aquamarine, and again, I'm going to put the colour on this one, mainly to the left and the bottom, because I want, and where these overlap, so I get shadows, really. I think that's important so let's have a look and see how this works but once this is dry if I need to I can always intensify the darker shaded areas that's not a problem I think I'm beginning to see how this involves working in layers more than anything else I'm quite intrigued actually to start drawing with coloured inks in um, my dig in digital art just thought about that I really do need to look into getting some coloured ink 
browns especially i seem to favor browns and olive greens the more and rust you know the more rusty muted vintage colors still strong colors but those are earthy kind of tones that actually that actually kind of works i like that so perhaps i'll choose one of the others i've got navy blue but i've also got blue dark aquamarine here so we will do the same with this one i'm going dark along the bottom where these overlap dark to the left there we go and i'm going to know which ink tense pencils i really like so i'm going to be i'll be looking for i know you can get them open stock um, that means individual colors so i'll be able to replenish my supplies of my favorite ones which will be great, she says. Because I definitely have some very favourite colours in here that seem to be getting used a lot more than others. So that's really quite nice. I'll tell you what I wanted to try. It's golden yellow. I didn't want golden yellow, but I want sienna gold. Hopefully I can find sienna gold. There we go. Because I would love just do it on one, on this one perhaps. This is my favourite yellowish colour. I have to say that because I mean it. So I'm putting the darkest where these overlap. And even though this looks like leaves, I'm not going to do a green in here i want something that's quite different i like that but i could do with another yellow i've got golden yellow here which is slightly different so i'll put this on either side and i think i've got another band here where i can put the sienna gold again yeah i have so they'll alternate which is fine by me and of course, because each strand is its own unique individual kind of um, border or ribbon, I suppose, then it's easy enough then to separate these out. Oh, my washing machine is on its rinse and spin cycle. Fab. I know I'm getting domesticated. I've let that go as well got so much washing to do but it'll get done it's not a problem so that'll work won't it and against the blues be lush so i may put some in these sections here as well around there but let me just give me a mo because I just put those out of the way. I have got somewhere. I bought myself a set. set. Sixty-five fine liners. These are the um, Stabilo point eight eight, which are fine liners. They've got an amazing range of colours, and they've got a lot of quite muted ones, um, which I'm not going to show you, but they are lovely. And I want a blue that will show up on this. I don't want it too dark, but I want it dark enough. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of them out here. And if these colours get all messed up in that container, I can. So I've got this one out and I've got that one. This one will show up, but that one might. Should have really done a test. Let me just put some of this the navy blue I'll just put it down on here can't do that in those sections I'd have it everywhere I can do it this way so while that's drying just do look at that lovely blue it's not exactly muted but on top of the that one it may be Look at that one. I might need a lighter one. 
what I want to do with these is just have a look because they are water soluble and I can just could have drawn these in and then just come back and re-wet the um, hole there. Just want another one. Quite a pale one here. Try that. And that as well. So have a look. That's not quite dry yet. That one would probably be too light to show up. Yeah, so that one's no good. This one is lighter than that one. That one shows up quite nicely. Wish these were a bit more muted. That one actually is pretty much a good colour match, isn't it? And then there was this one. I think I'll go with that dark blue actually because it does blend into the background. Okay, I'm going to take this big section and I'm going to do some sections with betweed in. So how do I split this up into sections for betweed? Well, I'm looking for corners and lines that I can use to split this into kind of rectangular sections. can see how this is feathering because I've added water to this paper and that is just something I'm just going to have to embrace. So I could put one there, I could put another one there and I've got that one. This one's a bit too narrow, this one would work there. In fact I might just pull that one in. So I've got all of these lines here and I'm going to work from the bottom edge Oh, you know, the outer edge here up towards this. So what between is you start on one side and you start to trace the line and start to bend it out in a fan kind of pattern. And when they meet and start to overlap, you allow them to overlap and we are going from side to side like so. Now if you're more comfortable moving the paper to do this, do it. I'm just happy to create shapes like this. Now these are 0.4 millimetres and the Staedtlers are 0.3. This is a funny little space but I'm still going to fill it with the top of Betweed because it will just fill it in. This one's a very narrow space, but it will still work even here. Just they meet very much more quickly. And we just work all the way down. Like so until we get to the bottom. I'll zoom in and do one for you because somebody will say they want me to zoom in or my hands in the way. I try to keep my hands out of the way, but I can't always. So I always start on the left hand side and that keeps things the same across all of these panels. So just going back and forth, little by little. again here. These long lines, I sometimes do start closer to the top before I start drawing along the line to get the curve. If I've got a big space like that or slightly bigger than that, I'd come back and actually draw lines in there just to split them up. Nobody will notice that you've added them in that way. So I try to keep a consistent gap between them. Because it's hand drawn it's now impossible to get perfect gaps. The way I choose to do it is sometimes I draw from the top down on the right hand side because my hand's quite happy to move in this direction. Perhaps not the best paper to use for wet media 
I can't imagine my mixed media paper would probably work a lot better. But it is what it is. It's sketchbook. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's about trying things out and seeing what happens and learning from it. I've learnt that if I want to use fine liners, don't use this paper and water first. But we'll be fine. OK, this one is going to be the same kind of thing. Except a lot of the weaving is going to be hidden behind this. Like so, we might have a bit there, there, here, and then I can fill this in with the other lines like that. So you're imagining where they would meet in the middle and this is where they start to be visible. So I've just put little bits on the edge there that you can see. So again, I'll come back down. I'm not worrying that I've gone outside the line here, over here, because that will be disguised with the panel next door. But I really like doing these rectangles. Betweed's a pattern that I've worn to recently. I never really used to like it, but I have worn to it particularly as I figured out how to draw it. Now with these, I'm beginning to bend them downwards to fit this space. And the weaving will continue all the way to the end then. It just becomes quite distorted. So you get the idea, I'm sure. Now my thinking for all of this was that it would be a nice way to show different patterns and to try different patterns out with each other. Here I'm looking at filler patterns perhaps more than anything else. Some complex, some not. Looking forward to drawing with these pens on dry paper. We're nearly done. Again, I'm imagining that the rest of this rectangle is off down here. So I'm just drawing these lines in as if they're going that way. And that works. So there's that one. And I'll zoom out so you can see it all in its glory. And so that actually works quite. I'm quite surprised with myself there. <laughs> quite chuffed, really. That, that did work. OK, so just for comparison, uh, I was going to say for comparison's sake, I was going to do one of the ones I haven't coloured in with this. But perhaps I ought to do another coloured one with a different pattern. And I think I'm going to keep it simple with some of the classic Zentangle patterns. So I'm going to do Crescent Moon around the edge. So I'm doing three auras and the in the smallest one I'm going to fill in with black, well, blue in this case. I've just realised I could have used my Zebra Sarasas in vintage colours for drawing. I forget I have those. I think they do have a blue. And those could have been drawn with on the paper dry and then the colour added over the top because they dry permanent. Ooh, I do have problems at times, don't I? Now, even though this is, would be going, actually it would be going underneath the edge, so I'm going to treat it as if it is. So I'm going to repeat Crescent Moon going from the centre of the each of these petals or feathers. So we draw them long and thin, they really do look like feathers when put together. This one, I'm just going to put some black in there and perhaps round that. Here we're going to get one there. 
Yeah. See that? Must remember I've got sarasses. So I've got those. And I'm going to do another. cycle of them. See then I did all of the outer ones together, the you know, in a humped line because it just makes more sense to me to do it that way. I've got this tiny little space here so what I'm going to do, I'm going to Thicken these because I could put another repeat in here, but what I think I might do is fill them in, fill this space in with lots of tiny little circles. So we're going to have a tipple, well, quite a few tipples. so and so we've now got that done so that looks like we've got quite a hole underneath here where these are gradually going under the other thing I'd like to do is using this pen because I've got it out is to use this to add some shadow or a thick area a thick line underneath these areas where there would be shadow so I'm going towards the top and right of these shapes. I will go underneath the bottoms as well, but by doing this, I'm giving that definite extra bit of shadow here. I can tidy lines and things up as well. Like so. And that just helps to lift that up, just that little bit. Shadow will shadowing will really help and there's lots of ways of doing that I could use graphite I'm likely to use ink tents but I could use chalk pastel as well there's lots of options in fact let me go and get a chalk pastel two ticks because I know where my pastels are they're only over here Ooh, there we go. wasn't planning on using them so didn't get them out but let's have a quick look because where am I oh I'm one minute and seven seven minutes Okay, I've got a dark blue here. Okay, I've got that. So I now need a, a paper stump or some such thing. I've got one of those. So let's have a look at adding some shadow here. So I've got a tortillon or paper stump rather. I'm just going to use that just to blend this chalk pastel out and to darken the shadows there and I can do the same all the way along the edges perhaps I'll put some down this edge as well because I think that down the edges won't harm okay let's have a look put some at the bottom as well I've chosen quite a dark colour for this. Like graphite, the chalk pastels will blend out and they can blend out quite a way, these pit artist ones, depending on the paper. But I don't want them to go too far, I just want to help to lift things. Lift these sections up from everywhere around them. So I'll just pop that in. And I've gone outside the lines here with these, but have I got, I don't think I have, don't have uh, a need bully razor on hand, but I have got an ordinary eraser and you can see I can just pick up where I've overspilled with that eraser. And that really does. create some shadows there. I could put some in between the lines 
of the, the tweed. And I think I might here where I've got the natural shadows and where I draw, drew the lines in for these sections you've got a lot of ink there and so it's easy to relocate them and just pop in some shadow in there which will just help to bring out oh as I use an end that's yellowy brown luckily the blue's a lot darker it will just darken these and bring some shadow on either side and will help to shape these even more yes I think so is that working oh yeah and of course then on the top it's white isn't it now I know I've got a white well, I've got white chalk pastel there I've got a white generals here have I got a clean this is the problem now where's my paper stumps have I got a clean one yes I do oops up you go of course I have silly me there we've got one here so I've got this one it's a general's charcoal white you know one of the ones discovered I have a box of them here <laughs> I buy things and forget about them but they work quite nicely so I'm going to put highlights at the top of these now I don't want them too bright I don't necessarily want them white 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 I just want it lighter than the surroundings and I am using a tortillon just to spread this out because it will mute, mute down or soften the the um the blue ink that I've used, the blue pen I've used, and it will give those highlights. So we've got that there. Last last bit, because all of the other sections you can fill in as you wish. Seriously, you can. You have my permission to use other patterns. And I may continue doing that while the video is uploading and doing what it needs to do on YouTube. I am going to get a lot of shadow down the base here. I wanted some around the edge. Because I want to lift. These others up. I will put some down the side as well. but we've got those in shadow and then this one here the tipple should th show through but this dark pastel just fills it in that little bit and increases that feeling of, of depth dimension as it were of layers okay now for these and these I can do the same kind of thing is I can look where the shadows will be greatest and just add hints of use this one I know I used it for my white but it'll be fine but I can just add some more of this here then with that and it just helps to create a much um, rounder kind of feeling and I'm just putting a white highlight where there would be one right okay let's have a look like so so that works quite nicely as well it's very subtle but it is there and these I need a nice green a dark green so let's have a quick look ooh, that'll be quite ooh, that one will be quite nice I think I don't have the names of the colours on these, they're just numbers, but this one I think will work quite nicely here. Again, I'm just going to look for where I can put shadows in, where things overlap. The same here and here. And then I will just both work this into the paper and blend it out that little bit just to give that little bit of a 
that shadow and dimension again. Of course, the principles I use here are the same for each and every one of these. So if I wanted to, I could just stick to pastel just to add the shading into these. So It's the same kind of thing. Okay, so we have a look. So we'll want some highlight on this edge, highlight there, put some highlight there, and perhaps some just up there. And I'll just use this, even though it's got some green on it, just to rub that in. Because it'll work. So like that, so that works as well. So I hope this has helped, has given you some ideas what to do. So the other sections you can fill in with your own patterns or wait until you see my finished version. I may get it done today, I may not, I'm absolutely hungry. So I need something to eat as well. And um, have fun and enjoy this. Until I see you again, take care, look after yourselves, and above all else, be creative. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.